Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode. I've got an interesting guest for you today, Bill Mueller from Roanoke, Texas, and he's got an interesting story. We're going to talk about five different themes today. We're going to talk about innovation in the digital era, which he's got extensive experience um, starting a networks platform, power of networking, and overall software, SaaS, and entrepreneurship. So, uh, Bill, welcome. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate uh, being on your show, Chris. Age, talk about your experience and background, how you got started, what you do, and we'll dive right into the show. Well, I've been a serial entrepreneur all my life. Um, started out uh, in the martial arts, been doing that since I was eight years old. Uh, I had a karate school. While I had my school, I was doing management recruiting on the side, opened a whole chain of resume services because everybody that came to me, none of them had a good resume. Yeah. And so then what I would I did, built a whole chain. Uh, then the advent of the internet pretty much just wiped that out. You know, I could have kept doing them on the internet, but I had one of the highest volume resume service uh, in the nation. And we had eight stores. I did them in a retail environment rather than an office environment. So it made us very unique. I was actually able to pull 40% of my business off my signs. So it made me very unique at the time. And then from there, I really got into helping employers. I put my resumes onto a database and helped employers uh, search that database long before there was resume databases on the internet. Uh, we were doing it through a private program. I had it where several people could hook into that database from my home. And then, of course, once the Internet came, uh, I started I need a job dot com was we were around before Monster Board. And uh, so we've been uh, in career builder. So uh, from there, I got into the job fair business. Uh, I had national career fairs. Or I worked for national career fairs and owned American career fairs. Uh, so we did career fairs all around the nation and have experience as well in the real estate industry. Uh, and then lastly, I really have gotten into networking. I really feel like it's kind of the un tapped market for people that really want to get out there and let people know about their business. Um, and it's such a warm market. You know, you're not fishing for cold leads. You've got a warm leads and nobody had done it really with uh, a technical background uh, where they really had the communication where you had a public facing website, you had uh, means of communicating between the group to share leads, to, means to share people's referrals online. Uh, so we put all that into the new program that we started called Start a Network, and we're very excited for it. It's going to launch on February 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of moving on, which is really interesting. And then this idea of um, where your innovation in the digital era, and you have experience, extensive experience in pioneering various industries and Share insights on how to start a networks platform and how it will revolutionize group management and communication compared to existing solutions. All right. Um, that's a long question there, but there's a lot of things that we offer. Number one, uh, a public facing website. So every group is going to have a public facing website. So different than WhatsApp, where you can have a small group and you communicate by text and video and so forth. Every group's going to have their own website that people can go to, uh, which will also be picked up on SEO and marketed throughout the Internet. Um, every member of that group is going to have a public facing profile. And so each member, uh, whether it's a business network or whatever, it's another way for them to market themselves. And then their profile, all we have to do is click on their picture and then share it to whatever social media we want. So there's just not a better way of endorsing people because when we click on it, it's different than going to Facebook and all them separate. I can do it all from one platform and it's designed very nicely. So people that do use it are going to have a really nice post about them. 
Which brings me to my next question is uh, the power of networking. And you've emphasized the importance of professional networking groups and sales strategies. And can you elaborate on why you believe every salesperson should be part of such a group and what unique advantages does initiating a networking group offer to an individual's career business growth? I think, first of all, it's going to put them in a position where they build strong relationships strong professional relationships, which is really key, oftentimes more important who you know than what you know, obviously. And the other thing that it does is it puts you in a position that you've got a built-in sales team. I have a professional networking group that I run, and I look at each individual in there as a potential salesperson who will get the word out for me And at the same time, obviously, I want to do the same for them. It's really building a trust. People buy from people they know, love, and trust. And this is an opportunity to get to really know people, get to really like them. And you're not going to refer them unless you really trust them. So it's there's a big advantage there. And uh, again, with all the communication apps and so forth that we have with it, it just strengthens that ability to market each other uh, and take it to another level. Yeah, I, I love that. And you've got quite a lot of um, experience. Next question I have is you have community and connectivity post COVID and reflecting on the isolation many experienced during the pandemic. How do you envision starting a network facilitating rebuilding of community and sense of belonging and what role do digital platforms play in overcoming crowded loneliness? Good, good question. One of the main things is after COVID, we know that everything went to Zoom. I'm a big proponent of the digital media, but I think we need that personal touch too. It's nice to shake hands. It's nice to actually meet people. One of the things that I do in my networking group is I really encourage the spouses to be involved. We have social times and we encourage them to bring their spouse too, because oftentimes your spouse is going to buy more from you than the other individuals in the group. We have a lady in there that sells leather purses. Well, how convenient when we bring the spouses in there that the wives are more interested in their products than, than the men are. Um, but, uh, the communication part just brings it to another level. So instead of meeting just once a week, we have the opportunity to stay in community all through the week as well. We're adding a social feed to our networking group as well. So if someone's even a part of three different networking groups, they can have a social feed for each one of those where they all funnel into one feed or they can switch over to just one of the groups are in and the social feed will be just for that group. So we really are tailoring this for people that are part-time networkers or they really believe in networking strongly and they're willing to get out there and get in two, three different groups. Yeah. Which uh, really interesting insights and you have, um, experience as a martial arts pioneer. And what I really love is um, blending these Eastern kind of um, philosophies into Western culture and transitioning a bit. You've had a remarkable journey in martial arts. Um, You were one of the early adopters. Talk about that and how the discipline and philosophy of martial arts influenced your approach to business and entrepreneurship. Well, you know, it's funny. I got involved in judo when I was about eight years old. So I've been at, and I'm 68 now. So that's 60 years of training. Didn't actually go to Okinawa until I was 18. And being 68, it's actually 50 years from uh, this year since I met my Okinawan instructor. Uh, He turns 98 this year. So it'll be our 50th anniversary, basically, of friendship and training together. So I intend to go to Okinawa again in April and uh, see him. Fortunately, he's very healthy and 98. And uh, to do anything for 50 years takes a lot of discipline. I'm going to tell you, because there's just plain, as you know, there's times you don't want to get up in the morning and do what you have to do to, you know, to excel at something. So um, I've been at it for a long time. Uh, My gray hair shows it. (laughs) But uh, I uh, I love it, and I think that uh, the discipline that you get through it. Now, there's a lot of different philosophies, even in martial arts, but 
the way my teacher taught in Okinawa was he taught you one on one. When you go to Japan, which is much more crowded, Okinawa is now part of Japan, but they teach to the masses and to the groups. Whereas in Okinawa, it's more the boxing gym mentality that one person's working on their forms, mm-hmm. teacher comes around individually, another person's sparring, another person's working on what we call the makiwara, another's just conditioning. And he comes around and works with you individually on each one. So it requires a lot of self-discipline. If somebody wanted, nobody's pushing you really. If I wanted to go to class and sit on the windowsill and have a conversation with someone else, it wasn't going to be a big deal. But I knew that if he saw me training hard, that he would spend his time with me. And I think we have to do our work as though we picture someone is watching us. And, uh, you know, for me, that's Christ. I happen to be a Christian and believe that I do all things, uh, you know, as I, I was doing it for him. But I think it's important that we look at things uh, where we realize that it's going to require discipline. It's going to require self-sacrifice. Uh-huh. And as you know, that uh, the Orient uh, East Asia is very big in that. Like I said, there's so many, what I love about martial arts is there's so many different facets and um, it can be a way of life. It's like, it's very similar to like meditation and you can, you have different uses um, and a uh, very powerful tool. And, you know, the same thing I was just talking with the previous podcast guests about using social media and social media, you know, people use it for so many different use cases. And, you know, like I said, it's a tool. So I think Bruce Lee said it, you know, take the good and use it and then uh, discard the rest. And when the student is ready, the master will appear. So kind of uh, ending it out, um, you talk about um, this challenges of being a trailblazer and you've been at the forefront of a lot of industries um, which has its own obstacles and share some of the major challenges you face while trails blazing and what advice would you give to entrepreneurs seeking to make their name in uncharted territories? Well, I don't know why uncharted territories has attracted me, but because I'm an innovator, I I tend to, you know, go toward that. Even the martial arts, uh, Bruce Lee was, you know, one of the few names that anybody really knew of at the time that I got started at and yeah. because of the age that I'm at. But uh, um, so starting schools had its own there wasn't a lot of name recognition for it. Luckily, everybody bottled everything into karate, whether it was Taekwondo or you know Chinese Kung Fu or whatever. Everybody knew the word karate. And then when the karate kid came out, then they started looking specifically for Okinawan karate. So it made my job a little easier. <laughs> but in some of the other things that I got involved in, like the resume services, I didn't really know of anybody doing them at the time. Quite honestly, it was not what I should have gotten into because it wasn't my personality trait. However, I saw a huge need for it. People I was recruiting, people would come in and none of them had a resume that I thought you'd want to uh, present to an employer. Uh So I was going to have my wife do it on the side, purchased a laser printer. And just because I had the newest technology, a laser printer now, everybody and their brother has it. People came to me from miles and miles around just to have it laser type set. Well, then next thing I know, I've got eight resume services across the whole Dallas-Fort Worth area, and we become probably the highest volume resume service in the nation. And yet you've got to be ahead of the game because as soon as the internet really hit, it was like someone turned the spigot off and our sales went down almost 50%. So what I'm really learning, and it's even more important than today, because our knowledge is doubling so fast, it's really important, especially with AI right now, um, it's really important to make things happen fairly quickly and to stay on top of the technology, because what's new right now, a year from now, will look very old. And uh, then, you know, I had the idea of, I could take these resumes, have them sign a waiver and market it because all these people are looking for employees work quite well. And then I put it on uh, my database at home. The problem was most people didn't even have modems at the town time. So I ended up having to go to these uh, HR 
uh, departments and try and hook up their modems to mm -hmm. talk to my basically database that was in my house. Mm -hmm. So then when the internet came, made life a lot easier, but it also made it easier for my competition. So um, got involved in that. I, I don't know if anybody had a searchable resume database before I did. I doubt it because the internet wasn't invented and uh, I had never heard of anybody doing that. Everybody looked at it, thought, what a great idea. The technology moved really quickly. So one thing about martial arts is technology doesn't pass you up. There's new training methods and so forth, but sometimes older is better when it comes to something like that. So I didn't have the same challenges in that industry. Um, I still seek out the older. You know, my teacher is 98. I'd rather learn from him than any 30 year old has to offer just because what they trained back then was tried and true, you know, a lot different than what's being done now. People think that uh, MMA is the way because they're really testing it in the ring, but really everything you'd use to really defend yourself in life, death, to the eyes, to the throat, to the groin, all those areas, which are your main targets, you can't do. It's, it's really in the way people envision it. I love watching it. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm a sucker for watching UFC. But when it came, comes to life death, I'd rather learn the old ways. Uh, then this uh, communication device, we've known about networking groups for a long time. Uh, I've been managed one uh, for quite a while. I have a son-in-law who is a very successful realtor and broker, and he's built his business almost, you know, primarily on networking groups. He met a lot of people. They became good friends. Uh, the referrals became uh, just where he made most of his business, and he did it while he was young. So those referrals end up buying two, three times in his lifetime from him. So, and he's only 40 right now, right around 40. So um, it's been very good to him. I watched him and then I developed my own networking group with some uh, internet and social media and so forth. And one of the friends that I met through networking is a uh, very talented uh, IT person. And him and I started this together. Um, and we saw the need, what would it take to make running a networking group easier? You know, what would what would bring it to the next level? And that's how we got started with this. And now it's kind of taken on a life of its own. We can do this for Chamber of Commerces. We can do this for karate associations. You name it, any group. There's no reason that we can't put a platform, take our platform and modify it for them. So we've been very lucky. If somebody wants to get involved in that, we're going to launch, like I say, on the 15th. And uh, we have a waiting list on the website that anybody can go to at, at www.startanetwork.com that they can get on that waiting list. And uh, we're really excited to get it rolled out. Yeah, it's quite interesting uh, when you talked about the martial arts because... Uh, you know, I competed Olympic Taekwondo and, you know, it's the sport has uh, evolved a lot and um, especially and then what's interesting is like kind of what you're describing this UFC is kind of this combined and it's almost like going from uh, checkers to it's going from checkers to chess and but it's uh, very interesting to see the business world do the same thing and uh, kind of apply those different principles. Um, you know, one thing that's on my mind, you know, talking to you is um with technology, because basically technology introduces changes so fast and so drastically and so abrupt, and you have to blend like traditional with with innovation. So how do you do that? And how do you reconcile just the old and the new and just keeping up and in, 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 in staying abreast of everything? Well, luckily, I have the help of my uh, co-founder because uh, he is just extremely well read, whether it's AI or whatever. We have AI in our program already. Um, but I think you got to keep enough of the traditional so people aren't totally blown away by it and don't really know how to adapt to it. You've got to have some things that that they've seen before and they know how to use. And then you add the new technology slowly and, and you have to make it you know, really easy to use, or you're going to lose people, especially people over 40. Um, 
And I think it's just really important to stay at the top of your game and use the new technology. But at the same time, um, people can't keep up with it. It's moving at such a rate right now that only people that are really, how should I say, got their heels trenched in and dug into it are going to be able to stay on top of it. I mean, the changes that are going to we're going to see in the next five years are just incredible. Um, so yeah, it's best I can answer that is have someone like I do, a great partner that uh, stays on top of every phase of the game. Yeah, yeah, I love talking to people on the cutting edge, such as yourself, so I can keep abreast of the ideas. And you know, when uh, ChatGPT came out, it you know, I it was um, it's a learning curve. You have to learn how to use it and what it can do and its capabilities and integrate it into your workflows. And uh, that that takes work to like learn and um, you know integrate it. And uh, with, with smartphones, after about three years, they're kind of they're starting aging, so you have to like upgrade to the new one. And it's uh, like so it's always keep a flexible mind. So. Yeah, some of these programs now where you can say, write a picture, and it'll draw you a beautiful picture. It's like, I don't know how some of the photo places are going to make it anymore, because this AI can draw anything, you know, and make it beautiful. Yeah, there's technology that's going to flourish because of it. And there's technology that's going to fall by the wayside. How can people contact you and follow you and check out your business, etc.? I would love for them to do that. Uh, www.startanetwork.com is our business. You're going to see between now and February 15th, they're going to see tremendous changes on it. Um, uh, they can always get in contact with me uh, at bill at startanetwork.com. Uh, would love to talk to them. And uh, those are the two primary ways at this time. Of course, uh, they can always buy the app and they can chat with me on it. <laughs> so. Out there, let's thank Bill for coming on. I, I love talking technology and what it can do. Um, and all of his resources will be in the links and show notes. And with that, thanks so much for coming on to the podcast. Well, thank you. I enjoyed it. Uh, I'd love to hear more about you competing uh, in the Taekwondo Olympics. That's 